Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about nine ridiculous magic items of D&D. One, two, three, four. Welcome adventurers to the Dungeon Cast. Hey Brian. Hey Will. Hi, how you doing, man? It's the end of the year. You told me so before we started. I- <laughs> It is, and I did. And it is the end of the year, like in the calendars, in the in the it's realm. True, the we calendar plan. Let's see, we're recording this on December seventeenth. You're probably going to be hearing slash, well, hearing it on the twenty fifth, on Crema. What on Crema oh, Day? That is on Christmas Day. Holy crap! You're right. Yep. the twenty fifth. I'm I'm staying up late tonight to make sure I don't have work to do that day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and then if you're on YouTube, uh, this is actually next year, and I'm sorry about the timing. Yeah, um, that's but what just the way it is right now? What a year it has been! Indeed, the year of the artifact has been a very different year compared to some of our previous themes, such as Year of the Fiend or Year of the Giant. Indeed, a lot of dick jokes at the front end. Indeed. <laughs> Uh, the Orcus's wand episode into the Rod of Seven Parts and Legendary Staves, Rods, and Wands episodes might have been a questionable move in hindsight. Indeed. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> also, uh, a lot of fiends at the front end encroaching on their previous year of focus. Uh, also, the patrons uh, voting into Demon Lords exacerbated the fiend issue. Indeed. We're just, we love fiends over here. It's true. Yeah. Uh, well, it may have taken the entire year of the artifact to finally hit our stride with the theme, but sadly, the end is nigh. Um, but it is not upon us quite yet, so let us crack open a few more item stat blocks. No, <laughs> a few more item slap, stat blocks and go out with a, a bit of a bang in the year of the artifact. Today, we're covering nine ridiculous magic items. Uh, so these aren't necessarily going to be gag items or anything like that. Uh, some might qualify as gag items, but I've chosen nine items that I deem to be fun, interesting, unique, and at least a little bit quirky. Uh, these are all items I would consider introducing in an ongoing campaign to spice up the level of fun, or in some cases, let the campaign careen off the rails into the unknown. So before we dive into it, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, Just that let's let's. I do think we should crack open a few more. Let's cram in these dick jokes in the rear end, too. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, yeah. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> first item, the bag of tricks. Okay. So first up is the bag of tricks. A bag of tricks is a magic item that can, be, that can materialize a variety of friendly uh, animals. Uh, most bags of tricks resemble ordinary bags made of cloth or leather, sometimes stitched with animal designs or basic but colorful patterns. Uh, there are typically three varieties, uh, depending on the color of the cloth used. There are gray, rust, and tan bags of tricks. Okay. Um, by reaching inside a bag of tricks, um, which always appear empty on site, the user will find and pull out a small fuzzy object. Mm-hmm. This fuzzy object seems to be nondescript. I could not find a description in any bag of tricks stat block across all five editions. Um, so I like to picture the little balls of fur similar to gremlins from the movie Gremlin when they're born. You know, yeah, when not the water. after midnight ones, the the the, the initial one, right? The well, no, 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 the after midnight ones. So they, oh, the, they cr- get, the crazy uh, nasty ones. Well, they don't turn. They're not nasty at first. That's the thing. Is uh they when they pop off uh that's what I mean you feed them after midnight they become the nasty ones so oh you yeah the, you're right you mean the Sorry. one before midnight yes the before midnight yeah. ones here absolutely right so what's what's the name uh Mogway what's the name of the original the the one that sounds familiar dude I, I haven't watched Grand I know it's been a, a while kid. well anyways they get them the first one the initial one wet and then a bunch of little balls of fur these little oh, yeah. wiggling fur balls uh-huh, uh-huh. that's what i picture you pull out of the bag of tricks okay there's that old star trek episode <laughs> where the ship fills up with the fluffy balls oh yeah i forgot yeah. about that one yeah, yeah we could for use our that even too. older audience yes absolutely and then for you gen zers out there i know you're on the audio <laughs> waves with us every once in a while but like dude i don't got it <laughs> i don't got it for you yeah i don't either i'm sorry i did not have a culture reference that is going to land with you because well, gremlins ain't it gremlins ain't it. you'd be surprised i have a um oh gosh my daughter has a cousin who is same age as her nine ten years old and he's super into old school digimon and gremlins <laughs> hey you like what you like you like what you like i'm sure that that 
to be fair, that sounds like an exception, like a niche case. Hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, I will ask my Gen Z friends if they know what Gremlins is. Real to be quick. fair, he's nine, so he's not Gen Z. He's whatever the next generation after Gen Z is. Gen A. Yeah, there we go. I love you, Gen A. Oh, that was a weird joke. Let's keep going. <laughs> when throwing this object, it will transform into an animal with a friendly disposition towards the one who pulled it, as well as their companions. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have on the bag of tricks. <laughs> not a lot there. Shall I go to the bag of tricks? You shall. <laughs> read Thank to you, you its glory. Yes, and splendor. Please, please do. I also will take a look, but I'll let you read. It's a wondrous item. Well, it is. It is quite as wondrous. As you clearly pointed out in your description of it. Indeed. This ordinary bag, made from gray rust or tan cloth, appears empty. Reaching inside the bag, however, reveals the presence of a small fuzzy object. The bag weighs half a pound or whatever the equivalent damn it i said i was go next year i'm gonna go look at these stat blocks ahead of time and i'm gonna get the conversions for I you i think it's roughly a kilogram if it's half a pound roughly mm. it'll be like 1.1 kilograms i as the, i'm gonna check but you go ahead you can give them a smooth a smooth calculation instead of a rough one mm -hmm, nice uh you can use an action to pull the fuzzy object from the bag and throw it up to 20 feet how that's like fucking what Oh, I had it backwards. It's 0.22 kilograms. Sorry, hey, can you, can you convert 20 feet to meters? 20. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. When the object lands, and can you say the result in a uh, like a transatlantic uh, radio announcer guy's voice? I will do my best. Okay. You know how to do that voice. I do. Your I announcer do. Voice. How many meters? 20? Yeah. That's 6.096 meters. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, it <laughs> it transforms into a creature you determine by rolling a D8. Can you convert the D8 to... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> when, Roman I'm going to start that sentence over. When the object lands, it transforms into a creature you determine by rolling a D8 and consulting the table that corresponds to the bag's color. See the monster listings for the creature's statistics. The creature vanishes at the next dawn or when it is reduced to zero hit points. Uh, the creature is friendly to you and your companions, and it acts on your turn. You can use a bonus action to command how the creature moves and what action it makes on its next turn, or give it general orders, such as to attack your enemies. Uh, in the absence of such orders, the creature acts in a fashion appropriate to its nature. That's much like the Beastmaster Ranger mm -hmm, rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, once three fuzzy objects have been pulled from the bag, the bag can't be used again until the next dawn. Um, will, so, would you like to roll a creature? I saw you get. I will. Prepped. There's three different bags. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, real quick about the um, the the Beastmaster Ranger. Uh, in this case, I think it's kind of cool that they they mention uh, acts within its nature because it also establishes that they're friendly. So if you're getting oh, attacked yeah. by something, they should attack on their own. Right. Um, but anyways. Uh, this is actually a D10. Do you have a, a real D8? Oh, <laughs> yes. It was just the only die on hand. D you heard it here first, folks. A D10 is a fake D8. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> All right. So if this was a gray bag of tricks and I pulled out a fuzzy, I would get a giant elk, bro. That's Hell pretty cool. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Banana bread at work today, dude. I'm going to roll the Hell rest yeah. back. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Please Excuse do. Me. I'm going to roll do. the rest back because I want to get in on this. What do you got? You got a five. A five. Giant goat. Oh, I love shit. goats. They always come up in my games uh, and, and on the and, show. And they get killed on this show. A lot. Real bad. All right. I will roll for the tan bag of tricks. What do I pull? Oh, another eight. A fucking tiger, bro. Double eights. Nice. Yeah, a tiger and a giant elk and Let's a see what giant you goat. Is there anything cooler than the giant elk for the first bag? A panther is cool. Dire wolf's not bad. Dire, dire wolf's, wolf's not is pretty bad. good. Um, I would have been mad with a giant rat. Yeah, that's a that's a weasel's worse, but yeah. Panther's cool. Giant badger. Like, giant, I am just to warden. Yeah, honestly, the 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 top half, panther, giant badger, dire wolf, and giant elk are the clear winners for um, that bag. What about this next bag? For uh, I think brown bear would have been cool. The eight is definitely probably the coolest, most best one. Lion's pretty solid though. Lion, yeah, lion's pretty solid. Honestly, I think I got the one I want. I think so, too. Giant goat wins. Giant goat is pretty cool. And Big hag energy. Tan, we have tiger, giant hyena, giant weasel, black bear. Axe beak would be kind of fun. Yeah, I think I think we rolled exceptionally well, man. I just get, got invited to a and d game right now. Did you? I did. It's crazy. Who's DMing? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody that's a fan of the show, though, so shout out to you. Oh, but, um, oh, nice. Yeah, they, like, learn the game through the show. Oh, for and sure. And now they want to hang out. Okay, um, okay. But it's a guy that plays with me, and he's like, hey, my DM want, oh, says gotcha. you can come over if you want. And I'm like, oh, if you only knew, I was recording the show right now. <laughs> that's uh, cool. 
Uh, I thought that would be normally I don't like look at my phone so I saw it come in. I was like, hey, it says something about D and D. I thought that'd be fun to get on mic. Yeah. Uh Black Bear, Tiger. What's an axe beak? Like, um, it's a bird, right? Yeah, it's like a it's like a an emu, but with like an axe for a beak. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Yeah. It's a fucking chocobo. Yeah, there we go. It's more like a chocobo. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's beak. I was thinking real world uh, analog. <laughs> True. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this beak does look, depending on its um, its art style, more axe like in some mm. styles than others. Right. But exactly axe like so. enough. Mm-hmm. It's a raptor. Yes, it's a raptor. Yeah, yeah. It's a velociraptor. All right, let's move on. To the yeah, deck. Yeah, let, yep. Of Let's illusions, the deck of illusions. So we got a deck of cards up next, but it isn't the deck of many things. It's, it's the, the deck. deck it's of a deck many of many things. things maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's a deck <laughs> of illusions. A deck of illusions is a set of parchment cards, usually found in an ivory, leather, or wooden box. A full deck has thirty-four cards. Okay. When a card is drawn at random and thrown to the ground, an illusion with audible and visual components is formed. This usually takes the form of some sort of creature, but it depends on what's on the card. By the way, the deck family of D&D is quite extensive these days. There's also the deck of dimensions, the deck of miscellany, the deck of several things, (laughs) the deck of oracles, the deck of wonder, uh, the fate dealer's deck, and the deck of wild cards. I was calling, I was saying like, uh, because I run a deck of many things campaign right now, and I was saying like, oh, the deck of several stuffs. But I was like, oh, that's just a funny like thing I do sometimes. But mm. the uh, there's, there's an actual version. deck of several things, and I yeah. learned that before this. But like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I should stop saying that. I mean, it works. Um, that's all I got on the deck of illusions. Like mechanically, is kind of where most of the meat is. So let's take a look at it. Let's do it. I'm gonna go look at the meat. All right, we got the deck of illusions. It's also wondrous. It's a submarine of Qualish. Oh, uh, that's always the, uh, the we don't have a, yeah, image. We yeah. don't have an image for this. One, I yeah. always enjoy seeing it. I I told. <laughs> Uh, those same players I run the campaign with, sometimes yeah. I generate magic items for them. And, like, a lot of the time it's a submarine. I'm like, right. man, it's Mr. Krabs. <laughs> uh, okay. So this d- box contains a set of parchment cards. A full deck has 34 cards. A deck found as treasure is usually missing 1d20 cards. Okay, let's do that now. Okay. I'm going to roll. I'm missing 13 cards. Okay, so there are 20... 20- one. One cards, yeah. Uh, the magic of the deck functions only if cards are drawn at random. You can use an altered deck of playing cards to simulate the deck. You can use an action to draw a card at random from the deck and throw it to the ground at a point within 30 feet of you. An illu- <clears throat> Throwing a card 30 feet sounds impressive. Yeah. An illusion of one or more creatures forms over the thrown card and remains until dispelled. An illusory creature appears real of the appropriate size and behaves as if it were a real creature, except that it can do no harm. Mm -hmm. While you are within 120 feet of the illusory creature and can see it, you can use an action to move it magically anywhere within 30 feet of this card, of its card. Yeah. Uh, any physical interaction with the illusory creature reveals reveals it to be an illusion mm. because objects pass through it. Someone who uses an action to visually inspect the creature identifies it as illusory with successful DC 15 investigation check intelligence. Uh, the creature then appears translucent. The creature lasts until its card is moved or the illusion is dispelled. When the illusion ends, the image on the card disappears and that card can't be used again. Uh, there's a lot of cool cards here. So it, it does convert like your playing cards. <laughs> yeah, it does. To, to your normal <clears throat> bi- standard bicycle deck. Um, I'll just kind of rapid fire through the illusions. Like, sure, yeah. I mean, the first one's a strong one. Yeah, Red Dragon, Knight and Four Guards. Ooh, that's a strong one, too. Succubus or Incubus, that's Druid, it. Cloud Giant, Etten, Bugbear, Goblin, Beholder, Archmage and Mage Apprentice. That's interesting. You make like fucking... Vecna appear as an illusion with. Uh, fucking... I don't know if you can be specific. That would be fun. That would be fun. Night Hag, Assassin, Fire Giant, Ogre Mage, Knoll. So the worst thing you can get, yeah, like, like a specific... is a kobold. Is a kobold is the worst thing that you can draw on accident. Because I think if you're drawing a card from this, it's because you want to ward someone off or scare them. Uh huh. And obviously, there could be way more creative uses, but the kobold has to be the most boring, weak, and less intimidating. And it's the two of clubs. Um. That or you, if you suck, you could draw yourself at the very end there. Oh, make the like deck's a owner. And you could make like a, a duplicate double. of yourself to run around. Yeah, That's but cool. you can't control it because it has to be random. So, but it'll act within its nature. Was that? Oh I no, think, that was the last thing. Yeah, it'll act within its nature. I Interesting. Think. 
Okay. Well, that's that's an interesting item for sure. Yeah, I think it could be a fun one, especially to give to like a a character who likes to like do things in either a chaotic or yeah, off the wall. I was way. gonna say mildly chaotic. Like for I would sure. give this to you in Super Quest Saga. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds cool. Definitely. All right. Uh anything you want to add about the deck evolutions? Uh no, it seems pretty straightforward. Because we're about to get crazy. I want to get crazy. Can we do the next thing? We can do the next thing. Okay. The Mizium apparatus. Mm -hmm. So now we venture back to Ravnica, specifically to the laboratories of the infamous Is It League. We haven't done a Ravnica episode on this show, but it is a Magic the Gathering, Gathering setting based in a world completely controlled by 10 powerful guilds, the Is It League being one of the 10. The Is It are obsessive experimenters, combining a keen creative intellect with a short attention span. The original mandate of the Is It Guild was to provide solutions for public works projects, sewers, boilers, and roadways, but their increasingly far-fetched experiments satisfy only their insatiable curiosity. Sometimes their experiments yield useful technological advancements. Other times they produce unintended mana geysers, spatial rifts, arc arcane portals, or huge explosions, all of which can be useful in their own way. The League's most grandiose experiments typically concern public works projects and elemental experimentation. These efforts use a methodology that relies on unexpected outcomes. All results are informative, even if they completely defy expectations. For example, an experiment that begins as the creation of a hypermana focusing lens might be renamed a scram range teleportal once the researchers discover more properties of what they have fashioned. Then, after a few goblin volunteers vanish inside it, the apparatus gains the de designation of Universal Refuse Disintegrator. Okay. Until the goblin volunteers are discovered alive, having been teleported far from the workshop. This sort of adjustment is par for the course in Is It Experiments, the fiddle and find out method. <laughs> okay. The uh, is favored over any process of systematic scientific research. If you won't say it, I will. <laughs> Fuck. Around, fuck around and find out. Yeah, that's much better. I don't, I kind of like fiddle, find out. But. Yeah, <laughs> fiddle about and find out. <laughs> the Is It League is one of the few guilds whose founder, the dragon Niv Mizzet, remains its guild master. Just as the guild continues to fulfill its original mission, even as its experiments go far beyond the guild's original mandate. And this item is probably their greatest creation. Innovation is a dangerous pursuit, at least the way the mages of the Izzet League engage in it. As protection against the risk of an experiment going awry, they have developed a device to help channel and control their magic. This apparatus is a collection of leather straps, flexible tubing, glass cylinders, and plates, bracers, and fittings made from a magic-infused metal alloy called Mizium. All assembled into a harness. The item weighs eight pounds. While you are wearing the Mizium apparatus, you can use it as an arcane focus. The primary use of the Mizium apparatus is the wearer can use it to attempt to cast spells they neither have prepared or even know. If you multi-class in every spell casting class, you can have access to something like 239 plus spells. Oh my gosh. Tell me about the Mizium apparatus, bro. <laughs> I will tell you even more, apparently, about this thing. <laughs> so you expend a spell slot to cast the spell as normal, uh, but before resolving it, you must make an intelligence arcana check. The DC is 10 plus twice the level of the spell slot you expend to cast the spell. On a successful check, you cast the spell as normal using your spell save DC and spell casting ability modifier. On a failed check, you cast a different spell from the one you intended. Randomly determine the spell you cast by rolling on the table for the level of the spell slot you expended. If the slot is 6th level or higher, roll on the table for 5th level spells. Uh, if you try to cast a cantrip, you don't know the DC for the Intelligence Arcana check is 10. On a failed check, there is no effect. Um, first level spells are going to be Burning Hands, Chaos Bolt, Color Spray, Fairy Fire, Fog Cloud, Thunder Wave. You roll D6 for that. Uh, you're going to roll D6 for all these. Second level spell, Blur, Gust of Wind, Heat Metal, Melf's Acid Arrow, Scorching Ray, and Shatter. I love Shatter. Uh, third level spells, fear, feign, death, fireball, gaseous form, sleet storm, stinking cloud. There's the best spell in the game, fireball. Uh, and oh, but this, uh, these gas and stink clouds will show up in the ethereal plane, though. I that they will. That now. Well, uh, not all of them will. The, the I don't. The smell won't won't translate. It's sight and hearing. Well, so po shatter and, and poison and poison clouds. Not oh. Yeah, I guess it does, right? So why? Okay, I feel like I'm asking the same question. Why is the fact that Gorgon breath 
Yeah, we did this. Why, yeah, why uh-huh. is it special? I don't know. When all gases will do it. Anyways, sorry. We have done this. Move on. Okay, fourth level spells. Confusion. Oh, this is a D4. So now we're in the D4s. Um, confusion, Conjure Minor, Elementals, Evard's Black Tentacles, Ice Storm. I like Ice Storm. Uh, Ice Storm is a cool spell. Yeah. Uh, fifth level spells. Animate Object, Cloud Kill, Cone of Cold, and Flame Strike. Cone of Cold, pretty good. Yeah. Like Ice Storm. And Flame Strike's pretty good if you're a cleric. I don't really know that one, but it sounds it's great. Like, it's a less good fireball. And if you're a cleric and you're not the light cleric, it's your best option for a fireball. Okay. I mean, fireball's in here, though, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're a cleric who doesn't have the Mizium apparatus. Let me just upcast fireball <laughs> uh, to fifth level. Okay, well, that was the Mizium apparatus. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, the image is cool. It's like this dude's got like a cannon on his arm. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. That's pretty much it. It's got like, you know. <laughs> He's he's wearing like a Ghostbusters thing on his back. Okay. Yeah, Ravnica is an interesting sci-fi um, kind of spin on fantasy. I bet casting spells make this guy feel good. <laughs> I bet they do. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Next we have a more classical item, a sword. Sword of the Plains, this one's called. Okay. Not a lot of lore on this sword. <laughs> <laughs> Which just came out in the book of many things, save for the fact that this sword can tear the fabric of reality, uh, creating a temporary rift between planes. So I'm just going to describe the physical depiction provided for us as it is a very good looking sword. Mm -hmm. That being said, this weapon can come in the form of any sword, including a great sword, long sword, scimitar, short sword, rapier, and double bladed scimitar. Sick. So the Sword of the Planes is a long steel blade uh, protruding from an ornate golden cross guard depicting the face and unfurled wing of an angel on one side and a devil on the other the hilt of the sword looks to be a white marble enamel with golden ringlets decorating it tell me about the sword of the plains brian that's a cool description um Thank you. sword of the plains is a weapon any sword like you said legendary requires attunement you gain a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic sword uh and then yeah, this sword can tear the fabric of reality, creating a temporary rift between planes. You can use your action to choose a different plane of existence from the one you're on and slice through an unoccupied space within five feet of yourself, creating a rift to that other plane. That's like one and a half meters, right? Uh, the rift can be up to 10 feet. That's like three meters, right? And 10 feet wide, uh, 10 feet high, 10 feet wide. And it lasts for one minute. How many, uh, what do they use? How do they convert minutes to metric? They do. That's how many times are going to do this joke? <laughs> anyway, uh, once this property is used, it can't be used again until the next dawn. Uh, you can specify a target destination, such as the city of brass on the elemental plane of fire, or the palace of Despater on the second level, second layer of the nine hells. And the rift opens in or near that destination. DM's discretion. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're not opening a portal directly into the palace of Despater. He's definitely no, fuck got no. wards against that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Can you just, imagine if anyone could just get one of these swords and fucking show up. Maybe you got a really cool one, and that's where you want people to be. Yeah, or maybe it's the only sword in existence that can do this, and it's locked away in one of Mephistopheles' vaults. And yeah, so good yeah, luck. yeah. Good luck. Good luck breaking into that to get, yeah. yeah, like an angel coming down and handing you this thing, like, go do a deed for me. I can't go to hell. <laughs> I made this joke sword. It's really cool. God will get mad if I go to hell. You got to do it. Zariel, is that you? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, where was I? If you're trying to reach the city of brass, for example, the rift might appear on the street of steel before the gate of gate of ashes or facing the city from across the sea of fire at the DM's discretion. So, you know, whatever you want. Yeah. Anything that enters the rift is instantly transported to the other plane, appearing in unoccupied space nearest to the rift. Uh, applicable weapons, great sword, long sword, rapier, scimitar, short sword, double bladed scimitar. And that's the whole thing. If you got the sword of planes. Mm-hmm. Where's the where's the first place you're going? Yeah, your mom's house. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm already on the material plane. Uh, <laughs> no, I would go to. That's a good one, man. I, I don't really think about this very much. I mean, they're all shitty. No, they're not. We've just covered most of the shit. Okay, well, the ones I know about are pretty Celestia shit. is nice. We've covered that one. It's very nice. It's yeah. very beautiful. It sounds big, and like I have to walk a lot, though. I mean. You could probably get an angel to cast fly on you, and now you can fly. Hey, I'm so tired. Help. <laughs> Poor soul. Can't walk up the hill. <laughs> Poof. All right. Well, I'd go to Arvander because it sounds cool. Okay. Um, man, where would I go? Gaping Maw, baby. 
Oh, yeah. It's got to be the Gaping Mob. What was I thinking? Shout out to Demogorgon. Shout out to Demogorgon. All right. We got one more before the break. This is a fun one. Oh, man. One. I wanted to go out on on a shout out to Demogorgon. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> let's take a short rest. No, no. Let's, let's okay, finish it. Let's right. finish it. So next up we have <laughs> a fun one. Uh, the Armor of Fungal Spores. So a perfect armor for your spore druid or perhaps your homebrewed Mykonin playable race. Okay. Uh, or maybe just your gross fungal friendly PC. <laughs> what lore do you need for this one? It's an armor set covered in mushrooms and various fungi. These fungi can emit poisonous spores. Yeah. Myconids. Tell me about the armor, Brian. Okay, I'm going to tell you about the armor, Will. Um, it looks gross. It does have to be medium armor, which, again, is geared geared towards druids. Okay. Yeah, armor or druids can wear. It's made of mushrooms. Uh, while wearing this armor, you can take, the bonus ac- take a bonus action to make the armor emit poisonous spores, uh, which fill a 10-foot radius sphere centered on yourself. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC 15 constitution saving throw or have the poisoned condition until the end of the next turn. Once this property is used, it can't be used again until the next dawn. Mm. You could put this on hide, chain shirt, scale mail, breastplate, yeah. half plate, spiked armor. The next dawn thing kind of sucks because it's a 10 foot radius. You know, if it's one creature, it's, it might succeed and then what, you know? That's true. If you're getting mobbed, though, and you can get, like, three out of four dudes or something like that, then they all have disadvantage on their attack rolls against you. That's true if you pick your spot. But also, like, I don't know. I would do it per short rest. Mm. Just so, just in case, you know. That way, okay, you do it twice a day. Why don't you get poisoned? Because it's your armor, Oh, you do. Oh, you do? Each creature in that area. That includes you. It does include you. This is a bad item. Well... (laughs) I would, in character, try to be, gain some sort of resistance to this particular poison. Right. I'm going to go in the woods and pop my armor, guys. Don't come over there. I got to build it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that works for me. I'd allow it. <laughs> I have a bad joke. Why does Jeff keep going to the forest to do drugs? No, he's masturbating. Oh, sure. God. Okay. Just tell us you're going to go do that, Jeff. You <laughs> You'll have to take your armor with you, man. It's sure is time. All right. <laughs> it's the grand adventures of Alien and Beard. Ah! Oh! 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 oh, for oh, the man. gods! What's happening? Oh, no. A cyclone! Oh, Alien, I have, I have the shards. Oh. I have them. Yes! Oh, oh, yes! I'm holding on. Oh. Alien. Oh, God. Oh! oh. I'm scared. Oh. Oh. There's no earthly way of knowing. Uh, Which direction uh, we are going? Yes, that's true. Uh, uh, is, is it raining? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it raining? Is it snowing? Uh, it's doing both. Uh, is a hurricane blowing? Uh, it feels like it. Uh, 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 not a speck of light uh, is showing. Uh, so the danger must be growing! You're scaring me, alien! Oh, the fires of hell are glowing! Uh, it's the Grizzly Reaper! There's a centipede crawling in the tornado! We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we are. For the last time. This year. This year. <laughs> um, if you want to uh, you know, help sponsor Alien and Beer, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the dungeon cast. You can. Things there will be uh, shifting soon, new items, um, things like that. Things there Our yearly stuff is happening over there. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, we, I, I do want to talk a little bit about um, the Hasbro thing on Oh, okay. On regular yeah. episodes. Because we did just, talk about it on the Patreon episode. So we have exclusive Patreon episodes called the Dungeon Chats, where we just kind of like do a media recommendation or whatever, or like rec- tell you guys what we've been up to yeah. and just have a, a simple talk. But um, mm-hmm. we did, at the end of the, the one for this recording batch, we did talk about um, Hasbro's recent layoffs uh, at Wizards of the Coast, which seems ill-timed considering like the success the game has had this year. And yeah. Uh, the company, in that regard, anyway, Will is kind of informing me about like its other 
detrimental stuff that's been happening at Hasbro and their uh, other yeah. facets of business. Yep, not my business, it's their business. But um, <clears throat> we we kind of when the OGL thing happened, decided to sort of like restructure this show to be not just D and D exclusive, mm -hmm. and um, and especially not five E current stuff exclusive. This yeah. episode has some stuff in there, and we do like go get that stuff. But otherwise, beyond that, we did not support Hasbro and like what they're doing. But like, yeah. we still respect this game and the history and culture it has, and we're going to continue to cover D and D content because of that. Yeah, and I think it's I think we both agree. Like there is a difference between the brand of D and D and the game. Mm -hmm. You know, Hasbro may own the brand, but the game is what happens at your table and what's been happening at millions of people's tables for fifty plus years now, and uh, they don't own that. And they never will. Yeah, it's still a really good gateway drug to get people into tabletop. That too. And there's lots of other really great simple options out there that are free and like mm -hmm. there are a ton of great resources. And then there's obviously stuff like Paizo and Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend that stuff. Yes. Um, we highly recommend you vote with your dollars also. And if you're upset with Hasbro, like let them know. Indeed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and we just want to, we're not going to do an episode on it. Um, which we also said on Patreon. Yeah. Um, so we did want to like kind of bring it up. Sorry for that the little bit of a downturn here. No, no, it's okay. I actually want to add one thing to it. Uh, I think some people might have noted that a lot of the items on this list, especially some of the ones that we're going to get into moving forward, are on the newest book that right. just got released. Yeah. I typed up this script like three or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to make another one. So this is what we're doing. Uh, just because you... Are hearing us cover it doesn't mean don't feel obliged to go buy these books you know, yeah if you know you're feeling conflicted about it you know uh, jot down a couple notes about the item exactly real quick. like yeah. google it you know yeah. it's out there yeah you don't have to go buy the books or to play use D &D. or use these items as inspiration for homebrew versions write so, your own yeah. the game is made for that Indeed. and you can there's lots of great third-party stuff out there oh, um hell yeah. please go check <laughs> it out if you're if you're upset that's, i think i told you that's this. the I, way i almost use pretty much exclusively third-party monster stat blocks even if i'm using a not third-party monster just because they tend to be better i pretty much write all my own monster stat blocks i oh, base nice. it off of something at this point but like mm -hmm. pretty much just kind of tweak everything because balancing my game is more important than whatever they shit out into the monster manual because yeah. it's always never it's never right yeah, it's like never for what, what I'm doing. Yeah, it's, it doesn't fit your thing. All right, yeah. let's get back to it. We're going back in time with this one, Brian. We're going to cover the prehistoric figurines of wondrous power. <laughs> They've been in some guy's basement for decades. <laughs> He's finally going to sell them. So you know what's cooler than summoning elephants and lions to fight at your side? Uh, I don't know. Summoning fucking dinosaurs to hey, fight at your side. <laughs> that is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> well, now you can. With the prehistoric figures of Wondrous Power, larger and more roughly hewn than typical figurines of Wondrous Power, these statuettes depict dinosaurs and related creatures from the earliest days of the world. There are four of these bad boys available in Big B Presents Glory of the Giants. Uh, the Plesiosaurus, the Pterodon, the Triceratops, and, of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Which one of those is your favorite? Ooh, um, I do like all four of these a lot. I'm going to go with the Plesiosaur, but Triceratops is also up there. <laughs> okay, I'm also going with the Plesiosaur, but yeah. it's because of how polite it is. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. Let me go to this stat block. Indeed, please do. <laughs> um, so, you read that part in the notes. As an action, you can throw a prehistoric figurine of wondrous power to a point on the ground within 60 feet of, you, of yourself while speaking a command word. And the command word is dinosaur. Uh, whereupon the figurine magically transforms into a living creature. If the space where the creature would appear is occupied by other creatures or objects, or if there isn't enough space for the creature, the figurine doesn't become a creature because that would be horrifying. Uh, the creature is friendly to you and your companions. It understands your languages and obeys your spoken commands. If you issue no commands, the creature defends itself but takes no other actions. See the monster manual for the creature's statistics, or don't make them up yourself like we were just saying. The creature exists for a duration <clears throat> specific to each figurine. At the end of the duration, the creature reverts to its statuette form. It reverts to a figurine early if it drops to zero HP, or if you use an action to speak the command word again while touching it. When the creature becomes a figurine again, it, its property can't be used again until a certain amount of time has passed, as specified in the figurine's description. 
uh, carnelian triceratops, very rare. This figurine becomes a triceratops for up to six hours and can't be ridden as a mount once, damn. And once it has been Hell used, yeah. it can't be used again <clears throat> until 10 days of fat. Sorry, I read can't be ridden as a mount, but it can, and that's <clears throat> awesome. I was like, why not? Yeah, I had a four. I'll get on what I want. <laughs> I had a 4E barbarian that had a, um, in, four, in 4E, they weren't called dinosaurs, they are called behemoths. Oh, so, sick. Like, instead of a triceratops, it was a uh, a trihorn behemoth, but it was a triceratops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, as a mount, it was great. <laughs> yeah. The reason they specify can be ridden as a mount is likely because there's rules for mounted. Yes, there are, there are mounted rules. Yeah. Although 5e, I'm pretty sure, is really scant rules around mounted. Yeah, but it is in there. It is in there. Mounted yeah. combat's a thing. I think it's like a paragraph. Yeah. Tops. Yeah. Uh, I could be wrong. I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh, Jasper, Tyrannosaurus Rex, legendary. This figurine, crafted from a uh, rare green jasper, becomes a Tyrannosaurus Rex for up to one hour. Is jasper like a stone? It is a stone, yes. Okay, yeah. Once it has been used, it can't be used again until... I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not it's a some, fucking miner. It's some like guy. A, I'm not a goddamn geologist. Yeah, I was like, who the hell is jasper? Jeez. I haven't heard this fictional character. <laughs> uh, once it has been used, it can't be used again until 14 days here, have passed. Here is a picture of jasper. It is not a man, but a red and black rock. Ah, cool. I I've seen those in the well, like, the pile of rocks at the at the um, at the gift shop at yes. the end of the museum. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> did I read this part? Whenever you command the figurine while it is a, in T Rex form, including commanding it to revert to figurine form, you must roll a d twenty. On a one, you lose control of the figurine oh, and it becomes hostile to you and your companions until it is reduced to zero hit points, at which point it reverts to figurine form. Luckily, you can just get in your Jeep and drive as fast as you can. Every time I've seen a T-Rex attack somebody, that's what they do and it I works. mean, you're not supposed to move. Isn't that the rule? Well, like, yeah. T-Rex is challenge rating eight, so that sucks. So you just now you have a challenge rating eight creature to fight. What's the passive perception on T-Rex? Uh, plus four. So. It should be a zero. Stupid. Me and your special guest Jake call it T Rexing people. I when know. We just I've, heard stand there. <laughs> I've heard you guys. Get yeah, did we say that in Super Quest Saga? I think you uh, did. Yeah, we're just, motherfucker. we're just gonna T Rex the shit. One time we T Rex his. Gra we were like hanging out in my truck in his driveway, and he was like staying with his grandma, <laughs> and she came out to take the trash, and we just sat there frozen, like completely still. Truck wasn't on or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just like walked by us, took out the trash. She like didn't see us. It's like, yeah. dude, we just T Rexed your grandma. <laughs> That shit was funny as fuck. We, like, died laughing. I'm going to roll a d20 now. I'm controlling my dinosaur. Indeed you are with I got a, a six. six. Nice. Uh, we got the Kyanite Ter Pteranodon, which is rare. This figurine becomes a Pteranodon for up to eight hours. If your size is medium or smaller, you can ride the Pteranodon as a mount. Once it has been used, it can't be used again until seven days have passed. And then the pyrite plesiosaurus uncommon. This figure becomes a plesiosaurus for up to 12 hours and can be ridden as a mount. Once it has been used, it can't be used again until four days have passed. While you are riding the plesiosaurus, you can you can use it to cast water breathing at will. Wow. Okay, as cool. It's a magic use, plesiosaurus. As long as you That's use your, your manners. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's pretty sick, actually. <laughs> it's really cool. So it sucks the most, but out of the four, but you do get to water breathe, which yeah. kind of and you get a friend up a little. Yeah, <laughs> you get a really polite dinosaur to hang out with. All right, anything you want to add about the prehistoric figurines of wondrous power? Images of these are also pretty cool. Yeah, they, they are look neat. like something you'd buy at like a at a, at gift, a gift shop. shop yeah, yeah, at the end of a museum. That not something I would mm -hmm. want to buy. Something I would enjoy seeing at the gift shop on my way mm -hmm. out and be like, cool. Now that I've seen them, I don't have to go buy one. <laughs> right. Exactly. Are you ready to move on? I'm ready. All right. Bella Shira's Beholder Crown is next. Mm -hmm. For this one, we venture to the setting of Eberron. This symbiotic crown is carved from dark purple and mauve stone with 10 points like stalks set with gemstones resembling the eye stalks of a beholder. To attune to this item, you must wear it on your head for the entire attunement period, during which the crown's hidden tendrils burrow into your scalp and bond with your skull. Oh, God. Belashira's Beholder Crown is a powerful symbiont created by the Delkir or the Delkir. The Delkir are extraplanar creatures that are native to the realm of Zoriat, uh, who appears as preternaturally who appear as preternaturally beautiful humanoids. Zoriat, called the realm of madness, is a plane beyond description. <laughs> by merely visiting the plane, non-natives risk having their minds shattered at the sight of the chaos. Mm. 
Symbionts are sentient organic items that are designed to attach themselves to hosts and be useful as weapons, tools, or armor for their hosts. Since the end of the Delkir War thousands of years ago, symbionts still remain scattered across Eberron. So you have to remember, Eberron has a completely different cosmology. They don't have the outer planes and all that other right. stuff. Shout out to Keith Baker. Indeed. Shout out to Keith Baker. Fuck yeah. Um, so we got it's a wondrous item. Legendary requires attunement. Mm. Uh, let's see, that part's good. While wearing the crown, you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical. Ooh, that's good. To a distance of 120 feet. That's good. You're, you're D&D that much harder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, seeing through magical darkness is really fucking good, The only actually. way I can think to do it as a player normally is to be a warlock and take devil sight. Or have a true sight spell, right? Or that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. or an item that has true sight, which... They're around, but like at this rate, you know, they're mm -hmm. at the same rate as this item. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Spells. The crown has 10 charges. While wearing it, you can use an action to expend some of its charges to cast one of the following spells from it. Spell save DC 16, charm person, one charge, disintegrate, six charges, fear, three charges, finger of death, seven charges, flesh to stone, six charges, hold person, two charges. It's really cool if you, if you cast hold person, then finger of death. Just a tip. Ray of Enfeeblement, two charges. Sleep, one charge. Slow, three charges. Telekinesis, five charges. Don't sleep on sleep. When it's good, it's good. Sleep or slow? Sleep. Sleep on slow? A slow is really good. Don't that... sleep Don't sleep on sleep. The spell sleep. I don't know. So the, the HP pool is so small, though, is the problem. When it's good, it's good. Uh, yeah. When it's bad, it's bad. But when and it is bad most of the time. It's bad a lot. <laughs> it's really good against mobs. When yes. you just like at the very end of like, you know, two turns goes by and a lot of people have taken damage and you're like, fuck this. The fight's over. Sleep. OK, yeah, it's a good cleanup spell. I never. Absolutely. Really, yeah, absolutely. And it's also really good on like, let me punch this dude. Let's everybody punch this guy in the face one time mm -hmm. and then I'm going to hit him with a sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's also cool. That is also cool. The crown regains 1d6 plus three expended charges daily at dawn. My point is like a lot of people misuse sleep. They cast it and they're like, this spell is bad. It's just situational. It is. Um, I've seen it be good. Symbiotic nature. The crown can't be removed from you while you're attuned to it, and you can't voluntarily end your attunement to What? You can't voluntarily end your attunement to it. Nope. If you're targeted by a spell that ends a curse, your attunement to the crown ends, and it detaches from you. Oh, it's this thing. It's a perma. Permanent Evil? attachment. Evil is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> it's it's a it's a symbiote right it's a symbiote like it, it's attached you can unattach it what's it getting from me i don't know life force maybe you have to eat more ah uh, <laughs> that's the point of a symbiote it's a, it's a give and take relationship that would be cool actually if i had to eat more like for, because of it yeah you know, you're like, like oh this is win 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 oh uh, yeah free food free like food. free calories yeah free food sick hell yeah that not free true. you're gonna spend more money on food that's like, true there's a drawback where you have to cook, cook way more but you get to eat more that's which true. eating's cool i like Bro, eating we talked about this on the dungeon chats i'm hungry why are you know, doing I'm this so to sorry me? it's okay i didn't talk about food specifically it's true it's in the lore will it's in the lore anything you want to add about the beholder crown nah all right, we're going to get uh, equally gross with the next one, the earworm. Okay. So we're sticking around in Eberron for another strange magic item. Uh, an earworm is a symbiont that embeds itself in the head and skull of its host. In exchange, it provides its host with the ability to understand and speak deep speech and cast spells. Oh, God. This, this one's evil adjacent as well. <laughs> I mean, it is a beholder crown, right? Like it's right. E it's, it's evil. aberrant. It's 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 it's, it's yeah. from Zoriat, the realm of madness. It's not good. No, it's not. Likely not good. It's not good. I would it's implement a filthy some neutral. <laughs> you filthy ass <laughs> neutral item. Uh, we got the earworm. It's yeah. wondrous and uncommon, requiring attunement. Yeah. Um, all the things you said are mm -hmm. here in this first paragraph. And then the spells. Eworm has four charges. You can cast the following spells from it, expending the necessary number of charges. Spell save DC 15. Detect thoughts, two charges. Or dissonant whispers, one charge. Uh, each time you use the earworm to cast detect thoughts uh, spell, it sends the information gleaned to the nearest Delkir or to the next mm. nearest earworm until it reaches a Delkir. The be, so it'd be cool to play a warlock with a Delkir as your patron. Because then they would give you these fucked up items that you would have to use. <laughs> I got you guys all. Give these to your friends. There's four worms. Yep. 
Don't, don't put them in their ears. Questions. Don't ask any questions. <laughs> uh, the earworm regains 1d4 expended charges daily at dawn. It has a symbiotic nature, which means the earworm can't be removed from you while you're attuned to it, and you can't voluntarily end your attunement to it. If you're targeted by a spell that ends a curse, your attunement to the earworm ends and it exits your body. This is also a cool thing God, to just like uncomfortable. wake up with an ear, a worm in your ear. That's you know? fucked up. Well, wait a minute. It has to attune, right? Like, so it can't. Oh, you have to willingly do it? I think so. That's how attunement works, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could just be in there and then there's nothing you do about it. It's just, hey, attune with me. Yeah, and then you can't cast the spell. Like it doesn't give you the cool st- the cool shit. Yeah, it's just in there. Somebody could probably be like, but it's not attached. You're in yet. the underdark, and someone's like, "I got this cool thing you're gonna want because there's gonna be some bullshit up ahead. You're gonna mm-hmm. want to know what they're saying, right? Mm-hmm. This will help you." Yeah. Also, you can do a magic, and then they just don't tell you the other part about the Delkir they worship. Yeah, or the fact that they're physically in you. You might just think you're hearing a voice. You know, mm-hmm. like something is like. Yeah, they could be like, "Just go to but sleep. No, you'll wake up with powers." Whispering to you. From that's, inside. That's probably some fucking you, you find a fucking mind flare like a rogue one doing mm-hmm. like solo mad scientist shit. There we go. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, I can help you if you help me. Right. And the only help I need is for you to take this bad boy off my hands and put it right in your, your ear. ear. <laughs> Anything you want to add about the earworm? There's some fun usage there. Uh, a, yeah, I think it's a quirky item. This is definitely evil. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Delk here is evil, right? They're not good. They're chaos. <laughs> they're the chaos incarnate. They're they're aberrations, right? So they're yeah. You know. Will's not willing to commit to what is good and evil right now. That's like, okay. Demons are evil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we got the Topaz Annihilator. All right. Now we leave behind Eberron and find ourselves amongst Fizban and his dragons. Fizban. Straight- well, wait. Does that count? Yeah, it counts. I was, I was hoping you would do it. That's why I wrote, put. I didn't have to put Fizban in there. Oh, okay. But I did. Usually I say it when you say the name of the book. Frisban's Treasury of Dragons. Frisban! <laughs> Strangely enough, it is here, and not back in Eberron, that we find a fantasy gun. Oh, yes. The Topaz Annihilator. And it's essentially a death ray. Yeah, but it only annihilates Topaz, right? No. This uh-huh. magic range <laughs> weapon resembles a musket, but in lieu of any ammunition, it holds a glow, a glowing yellow scale from a topaz dragon in its heart. It's just a really long fucking phase gun from fucking Star Wars or Ye- Star Trek or something. Exactly. <laughs> Tell me about the topaz annihilator. Okay. Um, oh, dang. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Uh, it is a weapon, firearm, legendary, requires a two minute. Sorry, it, when there's a default image for weapons, it does have the sword thing and not the submarine of Qualish, which is sad. Uh, this magic range weapon resembles a musket, but in lieu of any. Okay. The weapon has a normal range of 100 feet. Or, <laughs> don't do this to me. God damn it. <laughs> and a long range of 300 feet. And it has a two handed property. It deals 2d6 necrotic damage on a hit. If this damage reduces a creature or an object to zero HP, the target is reduced to, to dust. To dust. It says <laughs> to that. Dust. To dust, it says. To dust. Uh, a creature reduced to dust can be restored to life only by a true resurrection or wish spell. Uh, while this weapon is on your person, you can use an action to cast disintegrate spells, uh, save DC 18. Once this property is used, it can't be used again until the next day. It's literally a fucking destructo yeah, ray. Yeah, That's crazy. Death ray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the disintegration spell or disintegrate spell is much stronger than this thing's basic attack. Um, I, I was reading online. A lot of people were complaining about the, how it, this, the attack is kind of weak because it's a 2d6. Mm-hmm. Put this in the hands of your fighter, though, and they get three of those bad boys. That's pretty Four good. at a higher level. Um, well, you get, uh, you get extra attack of five, and then you get your next one at 10, right? And then I think they get a fourth one at 15. There, uh, You know, I'd, I'd have to look at that to yeah. be sure. So, it's I been mean, a minute since that kind of mitigates the weakness a little bit. But then again, if that fighter has a great sword, they're doing a lot more damage per hit. So you should give your fighter something cool to play with. Like a Topaz Annihilator. Like a topaz Annihilator. You'll like this. That well, could be the ranged. You know? I went down to the comment section of these as I sometimes oh, do. Yes. Please. Um I I found a lot of uninteresting things. Not to say that you got, you guys are asking fine questions. It's just like one of these comments is finally. But a couple comments later it says, This is my boomstick. And I know what that's from. Yes, so. I do as well. Army yeah. of Darkness Rocks, one yes. of my favorite movies of all time. Yes, we we know. We all know. Well, it, new listeners might not know. That's Long true. Long-time listeners of the show will know that's, Definitely that's one know. of Will's all-time favorite it's movies. one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, and I am on a media tear, and I 
I haven't forgotten it, obviously. Oh, you've but, never seen it? Right. Yeah, oh, we've you done, must. We've done, we've done this. We've done this. Please calm down. I just said I would. <laughs> you got to watch it. I got more time. We're going to make it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I got to. I'm sussing out all my anime right now. That's the thing I'm most behind on. Then it's movies. Then it's movies. Gotcha. Yeah, it's Ghibli's cool. and it's that stuff. And I'll probably rewatch Terminator. Why not? I fucking love Terminator 4 with Christian Bale. It's so good, right? Like it has no right being as good as it is. I'm going to show you but um I have a uh I have a signed picture of Christian Bale, John Connor shooting a T800 in the you face. You told me about this, yeah. Uh, my mom brought it for me. She found it and That's I awesome. have it here in the studio now. I'll show it to you later. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Don't let me right, speaking of which, I think it's time for a long rest. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. This is part of the show where we talk about how long this year has been. Has Did it feel long to you? It's very long. <laughs> it was a long It was one. very long for me. Yeah. Uh, the book has been very stressful, but rewarding. And uh, I've actually taken a holiday hiatus, so coming into the new year, I'll be diving right back in and trying to finish this thing out before summer. Yep, everybody deserves a break, so good job on knowing when to do that. Yeah, and thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for... Um, I, I saw some comments saying that they were like, oh, I, mi I missed the Kickstarter, I'm so sad. But we've got the backer kit. You yes. can go buy a copy of Star Seekers Guide to Dragon Star mm -hmm. with a link in the description below. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, we got to do Alien and Beer after this. And then... Uh, what else? What else do we have? Uh, oh, it's, well, it's the last episode of the year. It is long one, indeed. And uh, send us something. Send us something to read in our PO box for next year. Um, we'd really appreciate that if you guys sent like a postcard or a letter or something. Something for us to pop off onto the show, or um, or something. You know, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, you uh, guys send us anything. We'd be thrilled to 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 see it, to read it, to have it. So thank you. At a time. Yeah, I did. I set a goal for us to double our listenership at the beginning of the year, and we did. Uh, we did increase our. Uh, bleh, we did increase our outreach, and we had uh, some good growth. Not what I wanted, but like still pretty, yeah. pretty solid. Well, on stuff. Spotify, we had a twenty five percent growth. I can't speak for the rest of. Yeah, we definitely know, I, I we can. definitely grew across the board. We didn't double the the audience, but we hit a lot of big milestones this year. It's all mm -hmm. thanks to you guys. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for participating, continuing to listen to the show. We've got a lot of people that have been on with us for a very long time. Dare I say, since the beginning, I'm sure there are many of you out there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, let let people know about the show. Tell people about us. Leave that Apple iTunes review because all those things have helped the show to grow as much as it did. Um, yeah, and, and we're just gonna keep on keep on going. Take uh, keep an eye out for the new artwork and the thumbnail. I think this is one of the last ones we're gonna do for like a big stretch. So um, we usually change it out once a year. So that's always a fun thing. Um, we've got some new ideas for merch on the way. So we're looking to like you know get back on the merch wagon and see what we can do there. Um, check out Patreon for for special exclusive stuff that's coming out. Unhallowed is gonna be finished this year likely. So stuff will start releasing. And yep. um, there's going to be um, lots of lots of cool stuff on the way. Yeah, I think we recorded um, like 16 episodes total of it. We've got yeah. a lot in the tank right now. It's Six been fun. more to go. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we will uh, keep you guys updated about that. Um, just keep checking Patreon if you're a patron for um, – polls and episode voting and early episodes as uh and you know ad free stuff all that stuff is still there episode notes characters that we've created are down there all kinds of stuff um so thank you guys for such a great year really appreciate it had fun hitting 50k on youtube subs that was awesome mm -hmm. um keep an eye out for new youtube projects that hopefully we can get rolling uh and um you know let us know your your critiques your your positive negative feedback whatever it is as long as it's constructive we're happy to hear it and mm -hmm. um keep the ball rolling guys thanks a lot for hanging out with us and rolling dice and we love you we do we do love you thank you guys so much everything brian said and more yeah we've got some cool me and well have been on a lot of phone calls lately we've got some really cool prospects for the next year coming up in terms of like you know uh, like sponsorships that's like more of an us thing but like thanks for helping make that stuff possible it really does like improve our lives to to improve the show and it, it's it's a really rewarding thing to see you guys like enjoying it and having fun indeed um so that's all i'll say about that you want to do a social media run through real quick yeah you can follow us over on instagram on twitter uh slash x on threads and on mastodon um i tend to post on all four of those platforms and uh 
even even more so, I would encourage you to check out our Discord, where um, mm-hmm. a very awesome community exists and thrives, and me and Brian like to to be a part of. So you can chat us up there. And yeah, I think that's, that's all our social media platforms. Yeah, I'm not going to do any um, YouTube comments or uh, Apple iTunes reviews right now. Uh, I'm going to do Patreon episode is the start of the year, and that's next episode. And we're going to do Patreon shoutouts there. So the second episode of the year, you can expect some YouTube comments. I've seen people have a positive reaction to us reading them, which I think is great. Yeah. We like uh, interacting with you guys. So um, yeah, expect probably we'll read the comments of like this episode or maybe the next episode, um, depending on like if the comments are rich, I will read them. Uh, <laughs> so impress me. <laughs> uh, and and thanks to everybody that hits that like and subscribe. It all it all counts. It all matters. And yeah, it does. It seriously does. Yeah, every every little bit is is great. Um, really flattered by people, you know, repping us on their um, Spotify Wrapped and all that stuff. That is awesome to see. Um, the show's not possible without you guys. Or oh, well, actually, it is. It, it's very possible without you guys because we started it without all of you. But <laughs> um, it it continues because of you. It wouldn't have lasted very long without you. Y- yes, yes, yes. Like it, it definitely wouldn't have gotten here without the attention it gets. So thanks. It's rewarding to have you all here, and we love love having you guys here. So uh, that's my end of the year spiel. We'll catch you guys next time. Indeed. Let's call it a game. Dungeon Cast.